I really should have factored band-aids into the overall lore making budget. <laughs> What's up, Yanes guys? Welcome back to Fishing PA with Ryan Reed. You know, it's been a while since my last winter update video, but in that video, I talked briefly about a project that I'm getting myself into, particularly for this winter. Now, every year I set goals for myself. I set personal goals, I set work goals, I set health goals, and of course, I set goals for myself when it comes to the sport of fishing. Now in 2019, I've set a goal for myself that's a little bit lofty. However, what I'd like to do is design and build my own crankbait and then at some point in 2019, eventually hook and catch a fish on that very crankbait in order to complete my goal. Okay, so I established this goal. I'm going to design and build my own crankbait. I quickly realized how daunting of a task this is gonna be for a couple different reasons. First and foremost, I have limited experience with power tools. Secondly, I have little to no experience working with wood. And lastly, I never realized what actually goes into making a fishing lure, and in particular, a wooden crankbait that could potentially catch pike, muskie, and bass throughout the entire state of Pennsylvania. So as I'm realizing you know, what goes into this project and what I'm gonna need to pick up in order to start, I get a little flustered, you know, it's, it's thinking about all of the stuff that goes into this, you know, all the tools, you know, maybe having a bandsaw and maybe a Dremel and, you know, getting wood carving tools and sandpaper and understanding the grits of sandpaper, you know, 60 to 220 and, and really just everything that goes in the hardware wise. So the, the screw eyes and the split rings and the bill placement and really carving wood in order to make it do something in the water. These are all things that I'm starting to realize are like, holy cow, I have no idea what I'm doing. So we're just gonna do it. So to kind of keep this into perspective for myself, I'm realizing that I'm never gonna be as good as guys like Zach Baker or Fat AZ or Todd Leopardi. You know, obviously that's out of the question because I'm just not that talented and I'm not that experienced. So to keep things in perspective, I want a bait that's kind of small profile, something that I can hand paint that's not gonna look pretty, but maybe has enough color in order to attract a fish. So that's, that's what I'm doing here. You guys aren't gonna see a lot of high-end stuff that goes into my, my particular fishing lure. Now, as time goes on, as I get better, I might start investing in different tools that'll make things look a little bit more pretty, or as I get better, as I'm crafting, maybe the quality gets better. But for today, my goal is to put out a bait that swims, that has some kind of color on it, and really, you know, is gonna give me any inkling of a chance to catch a fish. Okay, so with all of this said, here's what I came up with. Now, probably about two months ago, three months ago, I started just writing designs and cutting out paper, and I started with a nine inch bait. This was gonna be a purebred musky shad type bait. However, as things adapted and as things changed, this is what I've come up with. So this is, actually my base template this is my base blank that i initially built that has a little bit of a crack in it so you guys are going to see some wood glue there but this is the shad bait that i'm replicating so to get a good look at that it's a small shad type bait and i'm calling it sir gala shad now for those of you who know me you'll understand why but sir gala shad again it's going to be a small crank shad bait i think this profile will catch multiple species of fish. And just to point it out right away, I'm using cedar wood and I'm using rough cedar wood because that's what's readily available at my local Lowe's. And again, me with my lack of experience, I decided to go with a rough cedar after I tried multiple types of wood and ended up with about 10 cut fingers from these types of carving blades. So the rough cedar in this profile, that cut, as a kind of a template is what I'm currently working with 
for these baits. Now, I wanna say this really quick. It's obvious that I have no idea what I'm doing. It's obvious that many of you probably have tips and tricks for me or something that you could mention. Now, if you guys have a comment on a tip, a trick, a technique, or something that's gonna help me get better in bait making in order to produce a fish on a lure that I've made, please feel free to leave me a comment. Actually, I'm begging you, I'm pleading you, feel free to leave me a comment below because anything that you guys can help me with is obviously gonna to contribute to me getting better at making lures like this. So with that said, everybody understands I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm not recommending that you guys do it this way. I'm just showing you my overall experience and what it took for me to make a bait just based off of ideas and really transforming ideas into reality. All right guys, so I have my goal established. What I'd like to do right now is I'd like to show you guys a list of tools and supplies that I put together that really all kind of contributed to me making my first Sir Galashad over the last couple of weeks. All right, boys and girls, so what I have here in front of me is a bill of materials. For every project that I'm involved in, I usually do a bill of materials for two reasons. First reason, to track spending. It's always good to know how much you've spent and where you're at. Number two, you get a full list of all the materials that you use for your project. Now that's really handy, especially when you need to go place orders when you run out of a specific product. So that's the main reason why I do the bill of materials. Now you'll notice at the top of this list, I have a product name, the vendor used, and the price. We're not gonna talk about all aspects here, but note a couple of items that were of a key importance to me during my lore making project, at least to this point. Number one, the Ryobi nine inch bandsaw. Home Depot, 130 bucks, awesome tool, especially when you're talking about cutting out this many baits. Now, I've cut out over 50 baits and I eventually ran through the blade. So I had to go out and buy a Bosch replacement blade kit. It came with three for about 20 bucks. Awesome, awesome tool for you guys to get started on woodworking. In addition to that, I picked up a Dremel 3000 with some additional Dremel carving bits. Now Home Depot, again, for less than 80 bucks, I got a couple of really awesome tools that help you sand, help you carve, and help you etch wood. The Dremel is an excellent woodworking tool. You guys should check that out. Now, one other thing I want to mention about Lowe's in particular is the Rough Cedar 2x4. For $9, I was able to find this Rough Cedar after I had already gone through multiple pieces of wood that were really difficult to work with. Now, the Rough Cedar is good enough for you guys to carve and carve easily, but it's not like a high-end cedar like that you would see Zach Baker using. So my thought for you guys is to check it out, see if you like it. The really interesting thing about the cedar two x four is that I can cut five inch blocks and I get 16 blocks out of a two x four. In addition to that, I get four Sir Galashads out of each five inch block. So realistically, one two x four, I can cut over 50 baits with that. Now, anytime you guys get into wood carving and you get a wood carving blade, it's really awesome for you to check out some of the whetstone kits they have there. If you buy a decent wood carving blade, you're gonna wanna keep that blade sharp. But really, Jan's Netcraft kinda saved my life here because I was able to order the water-based paint kit, the acrylic white base coat sealer, the gloss top coat, stainless steel fishing lure lips, the mounting screws for those lips, the split rings, the fishing eyes, and then eventually I swung by Walmart and picked up the treble hooks that go alongside of this bait. So all in all, for all the materials, you're looking at about 400 bucks, and I think this is a really good project and a really good hobby to get into because eventually, you know, if you get good enough and this is something that you're willing to spend the time on, not only can you catch fish on your own bait, but eventually you can hand these out to people, let them try it. They can catch fish on them. Now, if you get really, really, really good at that point, that's when you start seeing ROI, return on investment. You can start selling these baits to make up for that initial money you spent, which is a long-term goal for me. But short-term, I'm just happy making a bait, completing my goal and catching a fish in 2019. All right, guys, I wanna talk about the process briefly. Here, you're gonna see a video of me marking out 10 inch sections of a two by four. Now, this is one of the first iterations of the wood that I had. And I was able to kind of work with this 10 inch section when I wanted to create really an eight or a nine inch bait. So as I cut the wood here, the one thing you guys are gonna notice is that I shift from this white wood to basically the cedar. 
and I go from 10 inches to five inches. Now this was an adjustment that I made halfway through when I kind of realized that that bigger bait wasn't gonna work for me. So you guys can already see many adjustments right off the bat. Now the really cool thing though, is I got to use a bandsaw for the first time. I put this thing together when I got it out of the box. I had my baits already marked up on the wood. And as you can see here, I started the cutting process. So I'm just kind of railing through this piece of wood. I'm cutting out my initial template. And this was an idea again, after so many different iterations and trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Sir Galashad was kind of born and born effectively, you know, on this five inch piece of wood. Now, as I keep cutting here, you guys are going to see that this bait is kind of taking form. It kind of looks a little bit like a fishing lure here. It's pretty wide. So I decided to just draw a line down the middle and just cut that bad boy in half. In this particular area of the video, you guys are going to see that. I just went right down the middle of this bait with the bandsaw nice and easy. And then basically we got to a point where I needed to get the carving knife out and start shaping. So that's where we're at here. I was able to take this knife, just kind of work it all the way around the bait. And then eventually I kind of got stuck. I had to go through and sharpen that out a little bit. So I, you see a picture here where I sharpen the blade and then I get immediately back to carving. So as I'm working around this part of the bait, what I'm really trying to do is just level it off. I'm trying to round the edges. I'm trying to give it some kind of shape here so that it actually does something in the water. Now for me, again, this is the, really the first time that I'm spending working a bait like this. So it took an abnormal amount of time. I really worked these things slow. I worked all the way around. I cut a ton of wood off of these. And then I really took my time and just looked down the barrel of the lure here and just made sure that it was the exact size that I wanted. So, you know, with that said, again, this process, me showing this to you in about a minute, this is two or three months of me just carving baits, trying to figure out how to do this. So please put that into perspective. This is a long process. All right, next part of this process is actually sanding. Now I cheated a little bit here in the video because I have my Dewalt hand sander. But what I wanted to tell you guys is this thing actually helped me a lot initially kind of get that that rounded edge and also sand this thing down a lot initially. But then I used sandpaper by hand for a lot of the remaining process. So this is a combination of not only just a hand sander, but really working sandpaper over these baits. Now I used anywhere from 60 to 220 grit. It really just depends on the situation. Now at this point, I'm able to mark my eyelet screw holes. So I have the bait, it's all sanded, ready to go. I'm starting to drill my holes here. Now, this part is very important because the eyelet screws hold the split rings, which in turn holds the hooks. In addition to that, front eyelet is actually gonna hold a split ring and that's gonna be where I attach my leader in order to pull this bait through the water. So again, this process is interesting because I normally see this stuff on baits. I don't think too much of it but this process was fairly easy to get on Sir Galashad as I was able to drill the holes, screw them in. They, they bit down tight and everything looks pretty good. So I'm pleased with the positioning of those eyelets. They're dead center and I think they're gonna work out perfectly for what I'm trying to do. Now, the next part of this process is use the Jans Netcraft base coat sealer. Now this is a white base coat sealer. So what I'm doing in this particular part of the video is I'm literally just applying that base coat sealer using a brush. And this is how I've painted all of my lures to this point. I do not have a sprayer, I'm using a brush and I'm doing this all by hand. And I'm hoping that when I catch a fish, it makes this process even sweeter. Now in this part, I'm starting to apply some color. Now notice here, I started with orange. A lot of my baits are gonna have orange on the bottom. I like orange, it's one of my favorite colors. I just think it's cool, it looks cool in the water, and I think it has a tendency to attract fish like pike and muskie. So a lot of my baits are gonna have orange on the bottom. In addition to that, anytime you mess up a bait, the really easy thing to do is to paint over top of it. If you guys can see this, that was a really crappy iteration of Fire Tiger, so I decided to just paint over it in purple and then eventually use like a silver gloss coat on the top to make it look a little different. Now purple has always been a good color for me. 
So I wanted to mix some up. This is really the first time I was able to mix paint and make a different color. I mixed red, blue, and a little bit of white, and I came up with that purple. Now lastly, after my baits are all painted and dried, the last part of this process is to apply that top gloss coat. So I have a bait that I'm working on here, you guys can see, and I'm applying that top gloss coat. Now this process was interesting. I thinned it out with water per the instructions. It applied pretty well, but it's not really that shiny. So I need to look for a different gloss coat but I think this will work initially to kind of protect that paint job when I'm out there fishing. So all is well. Thank you again, GN's Netcraft, for helping me put all this stuff together. Now lastly, you guys are going to see I have this bait here and I'm drilling some additional holes on the front end. This is primarily for bill placement. Now this is the part I haven't figured out yet. I'm going to have to play around with it. But if you guys can see this, I was able to drill the holes, drill the screws through, and then bend the bill down a little bit so it fit exactly where I wanted, just below that eyelet screw where I'm gonna hook the split ring to initially hook my leader to the lure. So, that's the final piece to the puzzle. At this point, I need to put my split rings on, my hooks on, and that bait is ready to run. So super pumped, super stoked, ready to go. All right, guys, so this is the initial process that I went through in order to kind of design and make Sir Galashad. So my goal with this particular video and my goal with this process is to document each step of the process, document all of the changes and all of the iterations of this bait, and then hopefully kind of track where I'm at from conception to actually hooking and landing a fish using Sir Galashad. Now again, I started with this little piece of wood here and the final product is gonna look something like this, at least for the first iteration. So hopefully you guys can see that. I got the bill on there, which it's worth noting, I'm gonna to have to play with. I'm gonna to have to adjust the bill position to make sure I get the correct depth that I want, make sure this thing runs correctly. I'm also gonna to have to adjust the profile at times to make sure that the action is what I want. Um, essentially this hardware, you know, the hooks could be bigger. You know, the paint job itself, I'm actually really pleased with because this is my first attempt at a Goldie. I got a black base on it. I got gold paint. And I got that well-known black Goldie stripe kind of on the upper half of this thing. You know, overall, I'm pretty jazzed about this. I'm pretty excited. I think for a first go, this is actually not a bad looking bait. Now, some of you guys might disagree, which if you disagree, just hit the dislike button. That's fine. You know, I'm not trying to prove anything here. I'm really just trying to do this for myself and see if I can complete a goal that I set for myself. So hopefully you guys like the profile of this bait. You like the colors. Um, I'm kind of messing around with some colors now. Uh, just so you guys can see, I'm kind of doing a base coat of a dark color and then doing some kind of a top gloss almost with like a silver or gold pattern just to kind of make it look rough, kind of make it look unique. You know, it's it's not something that I, I'm really good at, so I'm just kind of trying different things to see what it looks like. So, so hopefully I can put out a couple cool colors. You know, I'm working on a blue and silver for, for Nader, and I'm working on a fire tiger for Greg. So hopefully I can get these baits finished today and at least have something to show them this week, just so we can get a general idea if they're gonna work. Now, it's gonna take some time to test these, so bear with me, guys. As I get out there on the water, I'm going to do some filming, do some testing, and hopefully, like I said, the end goal is to get a result of catching a fish on one of these baits or one iteration of these baits in 2019. So if you guys like Sir Galashad and you like this process, go ahead and hit that like button for me. If you guys like this content overall, you like seeing this face and you kind of like the idea of making these types of baits please subscribe to my channel. I greatly appreciate it. Now we're supposed to get some really cold weather here in the next week or two. And that ice is just about ready here in the good old state of Pennsylvania. So for those of you that are out there and thinking about getting out there on the ice, tight lines. We'll see you guys next time.